The crypto markets crashed and tanked this last weekend because of one man and one meeting. That's Jerome Powell, the chair of the Federal Reserve, spoke at a meeting on Friday in Jackson Jackson Hole. Where the heck is that? Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And he talked about just the incoming pain that is coming on to the markets and going to crash and tank the cryptocurrencies. And that's exactly what happened this last weekend. And so in this video, I'm going to play for you the clip of exactly what he said, what spooked everybody body, what caused uh, the markets to sell off, and what type of coins we should be buying, or really you and I should be buying, based on our philosophy of cryptocurrency. What are the types of coins we should be running into? Uh, we should not be capitulating, unless that's part of your philosophy. If you're new to this channel, my name is Aaron. I'm on a journey to my next Bitcoin while just learning along with you about what cryptocurrency is. If you want to travel along in that journey, join the Discord, hit subscribe. It's at the saloon and hit subscribe. That'd be fantastic. And, and let's get right into this thing. So I'm going to play this clip here of, of what exactly... Uh, crash the cryptocurrency and and by the way this should be serving as a you know a, a big wake up call for us because one the the bull the bull is gone okay the, the it's not nowhere near to be found not for the immediate future um and if you thought that the bull run was back and you're yoloing at, at 25 that's ridiculous okay i mean it is super ridiculous and two, uh, this man right here controls the global economy. You know, what I mean, it's just we are not, we are not, and I'm, I'm a crypto dude, right? I'm a crypto bro. Okay, we are not a hedge yet. Okay, we are not a hedge against inflation yet. We are not uh, widespread enough, not network wide adopted enough. But in any case, let's let's roll this clip and let's see what uh, Jerome Powell said that totally, totally tanked yours and my bags. The Federal Open Market Committee's overarching focus right now is to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve and serves as the bedrock of our economy. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. The burdens of high inflation fall heaviest on those who are least able to bear them. Restoring price stability will take some time and requires using our tools forcefully to bring demand and supply into better balance. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth. Moreover, there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation. But a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. Okay. So he's saying there is incoming pain to more specific low-income households, and these are some of the, the phrases that he said. He said, the economy is not working, okay? Price stability, it, this economy is not working for anyone. There's, no, there's price instability. He said, it is our job to forcefully use, okay? This is, this is not soft terminology, okay? This is, this is very forceful ter terminology. And he said that this, there, there will be a, a period of sustained decline okay so the sustain it's long term okay if if you thought okay this is the result of years decade over a decade 14 13 14 15 years of uh runaway mon money printing runaway just pumping the market full of uh fake paper success and just pumping that market full of it and then and then here we are we're here in 2022 and th th this is this is what we get. And so if you think that a few months of of uh, quantitative tightening of these interest rates are good. Here's the thing. The last 14 years drilled into people's heads that they were like that the economy was great, that the economy was like booming. And it, and it was it was it was fake. It was, it was paper. And they and it, it fooled everyone into thinking that they were, they were great business owners and all this kind of stuff. Two months, three months of this nonsense the, uh, of tightening is not going to reverse that. It's just not okay. And so everything is reversing now. And he's saying that it's it's at eight point five right now currently, um, and we need to take that down to two. That's four. That's four 
times the difference here, okay? And it took 14 years for us to get here. It's not going to take uh, a few months to get us out of it. It's just, it's just not, okay? So this is just personal opinion, not financial advice, obviously. Um, but here's where we are now. Um, he's, he's very, very, very hawkish is, is what's the term is that he's being going to be forceful. It's going to be sustained decline. The economy is not working price instability, softening in the labor markets, high interest rate, all these things cumulatively put together exactly where Jerome Powell is aiming the markets and it's down, it's crashing. Why? And all just to bring that, that inflation number down to 2%. So Forget about, uh, you know, having a party at 8%. If we see 7% next next time the uh, the numbers come out, that's not a, that's not a good thing either, okay? Uh, if we see down to 4%, I think that's when we'll start seeing like a, a different type of Fed. But I don't think people took them seriously. Now, what type of cryptocurrencies should you be buying? Well, as far as I see it, there are two philosophies on cryptocurrency. One, you buy into it uh, tangibly that you could make a lot of money in cryptocurrency, which you can. That cryptocurrency is very volatile, and if you could catch those swings up, if you could pick the right uh, coins that go up, you uh, you stand a chance, a good chance, in my opinion, to make a ton of money. Okay, you buy into cryptocurrency tangibly, financially, like that's that's what you could make money on. Number two is you buy into cryptocurrency uh, philosophically, meaning that hey, this is a this is a thing that is the, the future of every industry will be built on, okay? Blockchain will be the future of every single industry. That's one philosophical statement. Number two is that we we take care of our own selves, decentralized, okay? We don't need this, these big banks, these corporations to take care of us. We have our own private keys. We have our own money system that we don't need some uh, higher level, you know, smarter than us thinker to think, to think, think they know how to operate things better than we know how to operate, think that they could take care of us better than we could take care of ourselves, okay? Philosophically, you buy into cryptocurrency because of the decentralized uh, uh, nature of it, that, hey, I'm tired of these big banks, I'm tired of this big government, I'm tired of big pharma, big food, uh, big all of that, fake, 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 okay? And so that's where we stand. Um, y there's two things, there's, there's two philosophies in my opinion. To me, I'm a little bit of both. Okay, just, 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 I'm a little bit of both. Okay, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, but this is how it determines what you're probably gonna buy and how you look at buying cryptocurrency. If you look at it tangibly, like you could make a lot of money on it, you would probably be steering clear away from, uh, you know, something like Bitcoin and you probably go more into some altcoins or even micro cap coins that are, are doing well. So for me, these are things like XRP, like, um, uh, you know, um, Vulcan Forge, Gains, um, you know, th those are the those are the coins. Matic, uh, those are the go uh, coins that you would be looking at. ADA, you'd be looking at these coins if you're trying to make a lot of money. But if you buy into it philosophically, you probably buy into probably only two, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And uh, and that's where the future is being built and the decentralized nature, the, the, uh, the that, that whole aspect of it, okay? So... Depending on where you are philosophically, uh, and I myself am probably an even 50-50 on both. And at times, you could see in my in my, the history of my videos, I sway from one side to the other and I get caught up. I'm like, oh man, we, I made a lot of money in these small micro cap coins. Or the other times I'm like, what am I doing? Buying crappy co poo coins. And so I, I swing and I'm not sure if that's uh, an experience in myself or something that I need to work on, or, or some kind of self-reflection that I need to do, but I, I simply do swing between both. There are some people that are Bitcoin maxis, just super philosophical. Some of the Ethereum, the like the blockchains, the future type of people, that stuff is uh, is over there. And then you've got you know, cowboys, <laughs> like you and me, riding out into these altcoins, alt microcap coins. Anyway, these are my thoughts. Let me know um, what kind of philosophy you buy into it, or, or Tanjo, do you buy into? Uh, Tang uh, tangibly buying into cryptocurrency or philosophically buying into cryptocurrency. You let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.